Now the third component is is very important in scale technologies because leakage current as we discussed many times is going to happen across all the billion transistors in the circuit. But more importantly, this is not a transient phenomenon, it is a steady state phenomenon. So even if you slow down your clock and try to you know make your uh, dynamic power lower right for example if 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 you look at this right if you look at the transient power is equal to p dynamic plus short circuit you will get this to be alpha into f clock into cl vdd squared plus you know ip into vdd minus 2 V T n into T rise, right. Now if I want to reduce the total transient power, one way is of course I can reduce my V D D square, V D D actually, right. Therefore, V D D square will reduce, dynamic power will come down and of course dynamic power is going to be the dominant component of this transient power compared to short circuit and dynamic power, right. This will dominate. But beyond a point, I cannot keep reducing my supply voltage, you know, there are certain limitations uh, uh, in scaling the supply voltage also. So therefore, the best way is to actually reduce your frequency of operation also if you want to make the power lesser, right. You can reduce F clock to reduce P transient. This is a very effective way, right. Unfortunately, you, sh you should be very careful of this because the next component of power that we are going to talk about is going to happen only in the steady state. So if you slow down your clock and give more steady state period to the clocks, then you are going to leak more and more amount of leakage power at that time, right. So this is the So leakage power is like this, so if my input is 0, output is VDD, right, in which case the NMOS is on and PMOS is off. On the other hand, if my input is 1, output will be 0, right the NMOS will be on and PMOS will be off, right. So therefore, the on guy is going to connect you to the supplies either VDD or ground. So who is the guy who is going to leak current when the input is 0? It is the NMOS transistor that is going to leak current. So you have I N MOS when the input is 0. Similarly, when the input is 1, I have I P MOS that is going to leak, right. So if I look at my switching here, let us say my input switch is like this. V in, V out, right. Then during this period, I am going to have all the transient power. During this period, here, I am going to have st steady state power, right, and also here. And if you take a slightly slow clock, effectively it is the entire clock period during which you are going to have this leakage current, okay. This is also P, P steady. So what is the power from VDD? In steady state. 
it is VDD into it is just VI steady state current is I N MOS or I P MOS right this is I N MOS right or it is going to be VDD into I P MOS ok I am matching the color in all of these diagrams ok. So, therefore, I can say maybe I can say average power is VDD into I N MOS plus I I P MOS by 2 ok across the entire cycle right. So, unlike dynamic power or short circuit power this does not depend on the clock frequency power. But if I ask you what is the leakage energy then I have to tell you for how long because it consumes this much power and if I multiply it by the time then I will get the total leakage energy ok. So, one is dominated by energy the other is dominated by power right and you must keep this in mind always ok. So, now the question is what is the what is this uh, equation by the way I N MOS and P MOS right it is going to be some W by L I naught E power V G S minus V T N by N phi T into 1 minus E power minus V D S by phi T ok. So, question is fine I do have leakage power right it exponentially depends on all these parameters and so on. How do I reduce this leakage power right because remember that this is the guy that is going to kill your battery your phone is doing nothing, but still there is power being drawn from the battery. So, when it is idle if I can do something to just reduce this power it is going to be very very helpful ok. And that is what is known as stacking effect. Okay, so let me show you this. Sorry, no, it's not PMOS. Zero. Which amongst these two do you think will have lesser leakage current? So, this is slightly an incomplete question because I have to tell you now what the widths are because I just showed you that in the previous expression it also depends larger the width it is going to leak more current right and it is going to go linearly. So, therefore, let me say that this is W right this is W and this is also W. Now, amongst these two which ones do you think which one is going to leak lesser current yeah A B huh? A or B. A will have higher leakage why VDS is ok. So, good uh, you are getting there. So, let us first of all try to evaluate what this leakage current is in the ideal case ok. I am going to consider now an ideal transistor slightly differently defined from what I used to define call an ideal transistor earlier. Uh, ideal transistor earlier was no leakage current. We had only the you know the V min model linear saturation velocity saturation and I off was 0. Now, I am saying ok this is an other kind of ideal transistor where I have no short channel effects ok. Let us assume assume 1 no body effect 
okay we'll we'll come to all this later let's assume that means gamma is zero two no dibble no drain induced barrier lowering that means with vds my vt does not change okay so eta is equal to zero right now we can evaluate what the leakage current through this stack is of course this is a single stack one stack and this is a two stack so how do i evaluate the leakage current through that stack right what you do is you have to assume that this is going to be this transistor let me call it n1 n2 current through n1 is i1 current through n2 is i2 what is the constraint i1 act has to be equal to i2 okay so what is the value of i1 from the previous equation w by l into i naught what is vgs of the first transistor yeah no no okay so n1 n2 vgs vds first tell me what is the vds of let's assume that this intermediate node is vx so what is vds of n2 vx what is vgs of n2 what is vgs zero gate is grounded source is also grounded n1 transistor what is vgs minus vx vds vgd minus vx okay now first to simplify our uh, evaluation we have to make some uh, you know get a feel for what this vx will be will it be close to ground or will it be close to vdd first of all close to why no, no leakage current will be less is not something that it will fix vx so that the currents match that's all whatever current you get you get so since i1 has to be equal to i2 right the vgs and vds have to adjust itself for both transistors so that the two currents are the same correct so if you look at n2 vgs is zero compare it with n1 vx is some value between zero and vdd i don't know what it is we have to figure that out if vx is even 100 millivolt right vgs for n1 is minus 100 millivolt it's actually lesser that means because of vgs n1 can permit much lesser leakage current already correct n2 can permit much higher leakage current because vgs is zero so now tell me will vx be close to ground or vx be close to vdd so n2 has large large vgs compared to n1 compared to n1 n2 has large vgs n1 has small vgs right this is minus vx zero now if both currents have to be the same the vgs has to be compensated by the vds only then you can have these two currents to be the same correct you agree with me so if n2 has a large vgs then vds has to be small how will n2's vds be small vx is close to zero right so implies vds is small therefore right now here n1 since vgs is small implies vds is large so if vx is somewhere close to ground compared to vdd that is right then these two will easily match so 
conclusion v x is closer to ground and assume third assumption v d d is large ok. So, now let us write down these current equations I 1 is going to be or let us write I 2 first because it is easier. I 2 is W by L I naught e power what is V G S? I 2 look at this table 0 right. So, it is minus V T n by phi t. I am going to make one more assumption ideality factor factor e n is 1. Let us assume that you are able to manufacture the device so well so that the subthreshold slope is really minimum and all that ok all that no issue right into 1 minus what v x by phi t correct what is i 1 e power v g s is minus p x minus v t n ok. This is where assuming that the body effect coefficient is 0 helps because for n 1 the source is not at 0 its body here will be at 0. Therefore, there is going to be a body effect that will come in there, but for initial just to give you the intuition I am now assuming body effect is also absent right. So, therefore, both V t's will be the same V x minus V t n by phi t into 1 minus e power minus V d d minus V x by phi t, but V x is close to ground. So, therefore, I can just make that 1 minus e power minus V d d by phi t. Now, V d d is large enough which means it should be greater than 3 times phi t. What is phi t? 26 millivolt at room temperature. So, if you are over 100 millivolt which V d d for sure is right, you can neglect that 1 minus e power minus V d s by phi t right. So, I am going to just say this ok. So, now I wanted to equate these two currents and find out what that intermediate node voltage V x is. phi t ah, now. So, cancel everything implies V x is phi t ln 2. Now, tell me what will happen to the leakage current I 1 or I 2 if I substitute this value in what is I 1. Yeah, uh, 1 by 2 W by L into I naught E power minus V T n by phi t ok. Now, let us go back and you tell me what is the leakage current to this guy. Let me call this uh, uh, I 
1 prime. What is I 1 prime? What is I 1 prime? What is VGS for this transistor? 0. What is VDS? VGD. So, I can clearly write I 1 prime as W by L into I naught e power minus Vtn by phi t. Correct? What this is telling us is putting two transistors in series is simply giving me the effect of halving the width. Correct? Vx has gone and adjusted itself at phi t ln 2 so that the leakage current through the two stack NMOS transistor is half that of the single NMOS transistor with the same width W. Okay. So, this actually is not stacking effect. If I put two transistors in series, right, for example, if I put two transistors in parallel, right, and I do something, this is like one resistance, this is like another resistance, parallel resistance is R by 2. Similarly, series resistance is 2R, which means it is like halving the width in general, right. This is not the actual stacking effect. So, what I wanted to show you here is if I do not consider all these short channel effects, leakage current is not going to come down drastically because what it is saying is now instead of this guy, I will simply use a transistor like this because even when you consider delay and other things, that is exactly what it is. It is going to result in a transistor with width. W by 2. This is equivalent completely with respect to delay and everything. So, why will I even go and add the extra transistor, make it more area, more this thing and then get the same leakage current? It is not beneficial. What happens is because of short channel effects, for example, now consider Dibble. The bottom transistor Vx is very close to 0, right? So, we the Dibble effect is extremely less there. The top transistor VDD minus VX is going to be very high, right, and it is going to be close to VDD, right. So, what will happen to the threshold voltage of that transistor there? Yeah, it will reduce, correct. So, these two fighting will actually cause a significant reduction than just having that VDD. So, what happens is because my top, if I consider, okay, let me write that down. I think I cannot just talk to it. Okay, now with double single NMOS transistor is like this, right? VDS is just VDD, right? So the double effect. effect on VTH is equal to eta times VDD. Now, here when I consider two transistor stack 0, 0, right, VDD, the double effect on the top transistor, right, is VDD minus VX. on N1, N1 is equal to e eta into VDD minus Vx, right. Since that is lesser, if you consider the Vt, Vtn of this transistor here, it will be lesser by eta times VDD, whereas these two transistors, now they will not have the same Vtn of course, because of Dibble. Right, the two transistors N1 and N2 will have a different VTH, but will also be higher than the VT of this single NMOS transistor. Okay. So, what I'll do is since we have run out of time, please think about this and come back. Just stacking two transistors does not give you the needed impact. 
right? That's not why people have used this technique so effectively. That's what I wanted to show you through the derivation. Ideal case, it just reduces to a half the width transistor leakage, which is useless. I might as well use a transistor, single transistor with W by 2 and get the same effect, right? It's because of short channel effects that you get much more of a benefit in through the stacking effect. So I would even urge you to do a simulation now, right? You can go with your simulator LT spice, put a single transistor, put a double transistor, see how much of reduction you're getting in current. Of course, put the appropriate Ws and C. You just see, you will find that it's much more than just W by 2, okay? I'll explain that in the next class.